good afternoon. Uh, these are my disclosures, and that's a summary of all the potential drugs we could use in multiple myeloma right now. So there are more, there are more drugs than multiple myeloma patients. But when we come to real life, our situation is this one. We have a table with four legs, which are emits proteasome inhibitors, corticosteroids, and alkylators. And when patients ha are already refractory to this group of uh, drugs, uh, really their uh, prognosis is really dismal. So we, are, uh, we need to develop new drugs, and especially new cl classes of drugs for these patients. And uh, as you have heard until now, there are new proteasome inhibitors, new Im emits, new alkylators even. And you have heard about uh, monoclonal antibodies, which is the group of drugs which is more promising right now. In, and I'm going to talk about histone deacetylase inhibitors, which is a new class of drugs we could potentially use in multiple myeloma. So what are histone deacetylases? Uh, much better to call them deacetylases or DACs, because they are not only histone deacetylases. Uh, these acetylases, uh, what they do is to remove acetyl groups from their client proteins. And that means that several proteins which are involved in con the control of, uh, of uh, cell, the cell cycle are inhibited. So uh, the acetylases, in fact, end up having a pro-oncogenic activity. So we, if we block that, we, are, we have a potential, uh, a potential benefit in terms of, uh, of controlling uh, a malignant clone. Uh, I'm going to center only in these two uh, uh, DACs, the Borinostat and Panovinostat, here, because uh, are the two drugs that have phase three trials already uh, with, with results. Uh, uh, but uh, it's important to notice that these are PAN inhibitors. As you have seen, deacetylases and deacetylase inhibitors can inhibit any deacetylase or be more specific. And much focus is, uh, is now in, in specific inhibitors for subclasses of deacetylases in an attempt to reduce uh, toxic effects mainly. But so I'm going to center on these ones that maybe not, maybe not the last, uh, the last uh, group of drugs with benefit, but uh, as you can see, deacetylases or pan deacetylases mainly, any of deacetylases, they have uh, no effect when we, they are used as monotherapy. That's, uh, that may be a drawback, but uh, there are many reasons to think that in combination they may, might prove a, 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 better, a better effect. And that's because, uh, as, you have, uh, as, you have, as you know, the proteasome is uh, central in the, in, the, in the survival of the myeloma cell. We are blocking that with proteasome inhibitors. But uh, the cell can escape this way and use agresome to get rid of uh, undesirable proteins. So if we block at the, that other uh, uh, point, uh, you, we may have a, a, synergistic, a synergistic effect that in fact is proved uh, in, in vitro in several, in several experiments that have been done. And uh, also in phase one, two, uh, especially phase one trials, you can see that both borinostat and panovinostat they have activity in bortezomib refractory patients when they are combined with bortezomib plus minus dexamethasone. That means that patients that are already refractory to bortezomib, when they are treated with bortezomib in combination with these drugs, they still have a significant number of responses. So that uh, synergy is not also only proved in vitro, but also in vivo in these trials, and that has prompted the development of uh, uh, more advanced clinical trials, and there's two uh, programs of development vo for Borinostat, the Vantage, and for Panovinostat, the Panorama, which have tried to prove the benefit of these drugs. I'll start with the Bo Borinostat trial, phase, this phase three trial, in which patients were randomized to have bortezomib plus Borinostat or bortezomib plus, plus placebo, obtaining uh, about 50, over 50% 50 of our overall responses here that was significantly better than with uh, bortezomib alone. And uh, a really um, uh, not very encouraging uh, advantage in terms of progression-free survival. That was the, the primary endpoint. There was a difference of about 24 days, which is not much, mainly because these responses are not durable. So uh, let's move to the Panovinostat and the, Panovinostat and the Panorama uh, program. In the Panorama 2, which is a phase two trial, 
uh, including mainly bortezomib refractory patients, but almost every patient had also been treated with lenalidomide already, so that's a really refractory population. You could see that uh, the, uh, the rate of partial responses is so a third of patients, over a third of patients. If you include mean of responses, this is um, quite encouraging. However, PFS is not extremely long. But at least you have the proof that DAX, uh, in DAC inhibitors may overcome bortezomib resistant. So the phase three trial was developed and uh, included some important improvements with respect to the Borinostat trial. The first one is that uh, panobinostat was not given continuously. It was given inter intermittently in a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, schema, two weeks on, one week off. So uh, toxic effects of panobinostat were reduced here. And also another important thing in myeloma that dexamethasone was included with bortezomib. And always when you include dexamethasone, there's something else you have here you have in terms of edit. That's, that's the schema. As you can see, panobinostat placebo was given three days a week two weeks on, one week off, and with, that, with an attempt to reduce toxic effects that you will see are important in this group of uh, drugs. Bortezomib and dexamethasone were given at uh, the usual uh, schema. And that's the patients that were included. As you can see, uh, in this phase three trial, in front of the phase two trial, um, the control arm was bortezomib dex, so patients that were already refractory to bortezomib were not included. As an, as an effect, you have patients which are not very heavily treated, patients with uh, a median of one prior line of therapy, one to four. Half of them exposed to bortezomib, uh, not many of them exposed to len len lenalidomide and, and talidomide. So it's not the same uh, population you got in the phase two trial where patients were mm, really uh, heavily treated. <coughs> That's the effects in terms, in terms of overall responses. You can see that uh, there was uh, a, a, a minor improvement in, ter in terms of overall response rate, but a significant improvement in terms, in terms of complete or near complete response rates in front of the placebo group. Does this translate into an effect in PFS? It, it translates in, a, in an effect, in a four month benefit in terms of progression-free survival, that was the primary endpoint. And in base to this trial, uh, Panovinostat is now approved by the FDA, not yet by the EMEA. Uh, this benefit includes all subgroup of patients, all patients, different cytogenetics, and also is not dependent on, pre on prior treatment, as you can see. Uh, the effect is not the differential in, uh, for patients priorly, uh, priorly treated with bortezomib or emits. So, but in terms of overall survival, benefit is not, uh, well, there's not a significant effect in terms of overall survival for the placebo of, or panobinostat groups. What is the main problem with panobinostat used in combination with bortezomib? That's the, the main drawback. It's diarrhea, asthenia, and fatigue. Uh, uh, we, well, almost all uh, investigators in the trial agree that placebo was only evident during the first cycle because diarrhea was a common problem. That has an impact in final effect. Uh, hematological adverse events were not really uh, important in, com in comparison with the bortezomib dex arm. But in terms of uh, uh, this uh, uh, tolerance to treatment and patients uh, having discontinuations, really the, the, the effect of the combination panobinostat uh, on bortezomib was toxic. And this uh, led to a reduced dose intensity, a reduced exposure to the drug, and that means that most patients in the uh, panobinostat bortezomib dex arm received less treatment and for, less, for a lesser period than the rest. So, we are quite uh, sure that if we could uh, really prolong treatment somehow, um, this would improve results for this group of patients. And in fact, once you have a learning cu curve with the drug, you realize that uh, the problem of diarrhea that led to many discontinuations, once you uh, uh, pass the first uh, six cycles of treatment, is uh, really a, a matter that can be controlled medically or even out, uh, controlled spontaneously. So uh, we could really improve these results if you manage the, these important side effects. Or, as I said at the beginning of the talk, if we could uh, switch 
to new generation uh, deacetylase uh, inhibitors, DACs, that are more specific to specific uh, DAC. So in summary, we have a modest but relevant improvement in, prog in progression free survival when we, we use DACs in combination. There's a toxicity issue we have to improve. Uh, expert management can improve that, that uh, progression free survival benefit. And uh, the benefit uh, may affect uh, particularly poor prognostic patients, those that are already refractory to bortezomib. So it's, it's a new drug to have in, uh, at hand. Uh, you have an important improvement in complete remission rates. So uh, there's a potential benefit to switch to class-specific DACs. And uh, we still have to decide or we have uh, to, to define how, what's the role of DACs in the current situation of many new drugs because, as you have seen in, in, the, in, in the prior talk, uh, for, there are high efficacy triplets in the early relapse setting, uh, especially, especially monoclonal antibodies, carfilzomib. So there are less toxic combinations you can, you can use in this setting. And when you are talking about the burnt out a patient, uh, the, the one that has already received many, many treatments, maybe there's less toxic options like POMDEX or calfilsomib dex not, not calfilsomib alone, even cyclodex. So maybe the place of DAX uh, uh, will be in, high, in a high risk early relapse setting, but we still have to define that, that place in, in the context of so, uh, many new drugs uh, being incorporated in, in, the, in the arsenarium against multiple myeloma. And that's everything.